Track Talk. That's right. So we get to spend uh, the beginning of uh, every five o'clock hour on Tuesdays uh, with this man. He is the voice of Summer Park Racetrack and Casino. He's Eric Alwyn. And uh, coming off of a huge, huge Sunday in which the Mind That Bird Derby saw none other than straight up G capture the win under uh, sports radio host uh, Jim Rome, who joined us uh, last week. And in fact, uh, Eric, great to have you back for Track Talk. How's everything going? Thank you, Steve. Steve, I think I'm going to go out on top. Got a brand new mic, as you can see. Yep. 100 singles titles. Got the $100,000 Lexi. Front page of the Times. I'm on your show, and you tell me I was on Jim Rome's show. I don't believe it. I'm you handing are. over the reins. There you go. I like that. By the way, your call was on uh, was on Rome on Monday. In fact, he played the race and then gave That's his you know his, his reaction to it. So yeah, you were probably heard by a couple million people on uh, on Monday. Well, it, it was gratifying, Steve. And uh, that horse is a real deal. A lot of speed and can can extend it over a long distance. And I was impressed with Straight Up G. I, I thought that uh, you know having Jim Rome here just like all the other successes that we've had with the Southern Derby kind of lends itself to the thing that I've always been preaching to you over the years that, you know, we're, if we're not major league, we're, we're very, very close. And we've had, we've had instances here at Sutherland where stars have been born on this racetrack. And uh, for Jim Rome and Richard Baltus as trainer to, you know, think of us in high terms of bringing their expensive racehorse here, and maybe bring him back again for the Southern Derby. I mean, it shows that, you know, like a Phoenix, we, we, we've risen again. And uh, these last two years have been sobering, Steve. Being closed for so long and losing two, not just one, but two Southern Derbies. It took a great effort on the part of management to get the momentum going again here at Sunland. So it was, it was a gratifying day. There, were, there was about 5,000 people here. And we did our seventh $1 million handle. And that's hard to do on a Sunday when you're going up against the majors. That's true. Uh, now, uh, Straight Up G was written by uh, Ricardo Gonzalez. Has he been to Sunland before over the years? I'm not too familiar with him, Steve. Um, I, I know that he rides a lot in California. His, his ride was flawless. You know, he, he knew, Ricardo knew that to win this race with straight up G, he wanted to take the steam out of the field. Mm -hmm. the, the, the splits were sharp. I mean, they were almost like a sprint race. And mind you, this mind that bird derby was a mile and 16th. I think he went quarter mile in 22 seconds, a half mile in 46. So, it, you know, it kind of stands to reason that maybe uh, straight up G might have been getting a little tired at the end. It's hard to say. You know, he was in front by such a good margin at the top of the stretch that it was almost impossible to catch him. But I did think it was an excellent effort from our local horse, Bye Bye Bobby, who still is kind of learning how to relax at the beginning of the race so that he can finish fast. He, didn't see, he still didn't want to relax too much going into the first turn. And when his jockey, Chirinos, got him going, it was just too late. But he ran a good second, and it's his second uh, straight second-place performance in the Sunland Derby, but no doubt about it. You know, Jim Rome straight up G is the real deal, was bet down to even money, you know, and delivered. Hey, what? Uh, and according to uh, Rome, I guess he said he's going to leave it up to his team to decide uh, if the horse uh, recovers mm -hmm. well enough to race uh, in the Sunland Derby, which obviously has the coveted uh, 50 points for the Kentucky Derby. And okay. you know that if that horse is OK, he'll be back because, uh, you know, there's just too much on the line to, to, to stay away as is the best way to put it. Very well put Steve, those points, the money, you know, a half million dollars and an instant ticket into the Derby. You know, if you win our Sullen Derby, you know, I looked up Jim Rome on, um, Wikipedia last night. What an impressive man. So much that he's done. I think he's the 21st most influential, uh, you know, radio personality in the country. So he's right up there with you. And he's won two Breeders' Cups with Ms. Direction, that mare that I think I, I told you about last week. And if that's not enough, Jim Rome also owned a horse that won the Santa Anita Handicap and beat California Chrome twice in shared belief. So, I mean, 
for a guy that once said that horse racing is just a bet and it's not a sport, he's come full circle, Steve. He's done a 360 and he loves what horse racing means on all fronts, you know, from a spectator to an owner to appreciating the athlete, the equine athlete, and he cares for his horses so much. I, I was amazed at, you know, how ebullient he was when he won our race, you know, the yeah. Mind That Bird Derby, which is, you know, no slouch. It's a hundred thousand dollar race, but you know, Jim's been to the big time and, and won a lot. So it was, he was, it was such a great interview too. So it was, you know, it helps. He helps someone a lot by participating in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Eric Alwyn with us right now, the voice of Sullivan Park Racetrack uh, and Casino as we get ready for this week's edition of Track Talk. By the way, that's a homebred horse and he does not have a lot of horse, you know, horses in his stable. So to right. think that that horse, uh, you know, was was basically uh, bred there in his uh, with his team. And uh, as rare as that is to turn into a stakes winner like this. That, that, that's almost unheard of in the business when you're dealing with such a small head of horses like he has. Another very good point that you bring up. A homebred is what they call it. You know, you'll see the majors, you know, like uh, Calumet Farm or Stone Street or, you know, those big operations in Kentucky that can do it. But when you only have a few mares and then one of them can produce a stakes winner and you own the mama, you own her offspring, it's an extra special deal. I think one of the reasons that he wanted to come to Sunland, uh, in addition to that it leads to the Sunland Derby, is that Straight Up G had never faced what we call open competition before. Sure, he had run against really good California breads in Southern California, and that, that, that means a lot anyway, because you're running at the big time, and California breads are strong. They're not Kentucky breads, though. Yeah. So, you know... So he proved that he can beat Kentucky Brits when he won here. Eric, let's talk about also the uh, Red Heat and Mile, which was raced on uh, Sunday, along with the Island Fashion Stakes as well. And, um, you know, you also had um, the Albert and Henry Dominguez handicap. There was a lot of good, a okay. lot of good stakes races on Sunday, in addition to the Mind That Bird Derby. The drama was so high, Steve, that, you know, it was – I, I, as of the announcer, I didn't want to crescendo too much before the Mind That Bird Derby, but those races were awesome. So listen to what Sea Emperor has done, and he won the, the first one, the Albert and Henry Dominguez Memorial Handicap. For the life of me, Steve, I cannot believe, I should have had you bet on it, Sea Emperor goes off at 7-8-1. to one. You know what his record is over Sullen Park soil? Seven of nine. Absolutely loves this territory our racetrack now mind you those many of those races were not stakes races but he was a major threat and he wanted over another hard knocking performer called uh jet and g and they put on quite a show they were two closers they both were near the lead at the top of the stretch and they just battled it out all the way down sea emperor won for jose r gonzalez jr remember this name steve luis Fuentes. he is going to be a, a major player at sunland hopefully we can keep him He's that good of a rider. He rode the emperor. The other uh, race you, you commented on was the Allen Fashion. Miss Hard Knocks wins again. She was the one that won the other lead-in race to our Sunland Oaks, the Borderplex. She comes from off the pace and just rolls away. So she looked great. She'll be a threat in the Oaks, Sunland Park Oaks. She's trained by Bart Holm. And the Red Heated Mile uh, was one in very good fashion, coming from well off the pace for Joel Marr who uh, is a name we haven't heard too much of lately, the great trainer of Pepper's Pride. He won with Jet Set Warrior. So he's uh, rolling again. And uh, Joel Marr's been one of our leading trainers for so long. I would almost say that uh, Joel Marr uh, should probably be one of those Hall of Famers, right? Just because Definitely. he's been doing it for so many years and Definitely. longevity. And that, that's, that's, that's hard to find in this business, isn't it? Yeah. And he doesn't waste too much time with claimers, you know. Or, you know, horses that he he deals in the high end, the high end category of New Mexico breads. And that's where all the money is. You know, all of our New Mexico bread stakes races are $100,000. So each and every year, Joel seems to target those. And he's been just a fantastic trainer. And to, to have trained a champion like Pepper's Pride who never got beat, 
Joel will go down in the annals, not just in local history of horse racing, but national history. That's how good Joel is. Let's talk about the week coming up and what you have. Uh, obviously, uh, live racing is every Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Give me a preview of what to expect this weekend out here at Sunland Park Racetrack and Casino. I don't know if we commented on it, but some big news, Steve. Uh, we had a 25% purse increase that takes place. I think it's already kicked in. So we're giving away about $60,000 extra per day than we were before. So we could look for a really strong last uh, 20 days in the live meet. I think that's how many days we, that we still have left. But uh, we have a curable handicap on Saturday, and it's going to feature the return of that half-brother to mine that bird who's looked stunning here at Sunland. Mine that star. Judge Lanier Racing owns it. Uh, he was a horse that once sold for a ton of money. I think about a half million. But the connection sort of gave up on him. And here's uh, the McKenna's. Uh, Tom and Sandy McKenna, they pick up the horse for much, much less than that. And what does he do? He rolls off four or five wins here in New Mexico, including the Wincham Lad last time out. So I look for him to be a big factor on Saturday. And then there's the Pepper's Pride Handicap, which is ironic that that one's coming up now. That'll be on Sunday. I like a horse called Our Time to Shine in that one. Tell me a little bit about the Pepper's Pride Handicap. Will there be a pretty nice field all in all? I haven't seen the form yet. Uh, it's a race for New Mexico bred females going along. So you need that stamina, you need that punch. And there was a race that I called about a month ago and our time to shine just rolled. And it was going six and a half. And I already know that she likes to route. So it could be her coming out party to win uh, her first stakes race. She stakes placed, but uh, that would be a nice one to, to pull down. I think Todd has a horse in the race. Uh, Todd Fincher, proofs in the pudding. She's a horse that's been uh, chasing the likes of Slam. I don't think you know about Slam yet because we didn't, we weren't doing the show when she was running. But she's the she is the undisputed queen of uh, female New Mexico breads, going short or long. Kind of interesting to find out why Slam isn't in that race. Eric Alwyn, uh, the uh, the voice of Sunland Park Racetrack and Casino, with us here on Track Talk. When does uh, the free nominations for the Sunland Derby end? I don't know. I'll have to look that up. I think it's, I think it's pretty soon. I yep. think that they have to, all they have to do is, you know, put their name on that list. It's free. And then to enter is when they have to pay. That's when they have to pay. So we'll be finding out more concrete who's coming. When I see that uh, list of horses that are on that plane that always comes in to the airport, say four or five days before, but we'll see the manifest before that. But we'll have a few more weeks to kind of recruit, make phone calls. I know Dustin Dix has been super excited about it. And I know our racing secretary thinks that we'll at least have 10. So it's going to be a good size field, yeah. maybe eight for the Oaks. And we'll probably have 12 races on that day. It could be a, you know, a monster day. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to the weeks leading up to it as we continue here on Track Talk. Eric, always a pleasure. Thanks for Thank the you, time Steve. and look forward to doing it again with you right back here next Tuesday. See you next week, Steve. Thank you.